Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I'm looking at our Mars probe for the Mars flyby mission and we're gonna pick that up and get this built. And we are using the Ranger solar panels to get enough power at Mars and we have the same sort of antenna arrangement as band 43 a decibel thingamajigs, I assume meters, and uh, tech level 3 and that has a maximum range of 150 million kilometers right now which may or may not be good enough for Mars, we'll see. And uh, yeah, otherwise the same as the last probe that we sent to Venus. I, have, I was trying to say Eve because we we're calling these based on the Kerbal planets. So this got to be called Duna 1, even though it's going to Mars. I'm sure it is not going to confuse me at all. Uh, and of course, the Venus ones were called Eve. Um, but I wanted to note that we also have an upgrade for the Gamma 2 we finally have the larch and so that has better isp and a little bit more thrust same burn time uh, so we are just going to get the better isp value well that delta v went down so we probably have to redo the tank larch and i hope we don't have to redo the gse i think it's just the fuel mix it's still rp1 and htp the mix is just different so we'll also change these as well. Okay, so that is done. And yeah, obviously I was looking at Kerbalism for the power situation. And, well, with degradation, they're probably not going to provide enough power. We'll see how the power does. But it's got to be rough. It's got to be rough for sure. But only when transmitting. So when it's idle, it won't be too bad. Okay, so this will be being built on ELA-4. We've recovered the Dionysus-1 spacecraft, so we'll attach a new rocket to it and hope that everything works out right. We don't have all our people at the ELA-5, so that's why it's taking so long. And hiring people right now is a little bit tight, so we might not do that. Anyway, it's got a new rocket now, and this one does have the action groups to turn off the engines and everything like that as well as the extra engines on the second stage so that we can limit the um, thrust weight ratio there though those aren't larches right now they're still the normal gamma twos anyway save edits it seems like we might try to land on the moon first with the looney 2 and then move on to the next test of the crude launcher uh, so we still need to do this orbital test flight uncrewed before we can actually do the orbital test flight crewed or orbital flight crewed. So, yeah, so we have to send it up uncrewed one more time, but we'll test the thrust weight limiting features before moving on to the actual crewed one. But yeah, I think we'll be landing on the moon first or trying to. Research, we've still got a lot of research queued. We at least probably want to get to lunar rated heat shields. Lunar landing doesn't have a whole lot for us because the lunar module descent engine um, is beyond our limit. The ascent engine isn't. We could use that. I note that they used to only have one ignition on the ascent engine. Now they've got 35. And they used to have three for the descent engine. Now they've got 20. I guess somebody found a document. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think they've got a custom rover. That's nice. I guess we'll just queue up these avionics things. These all require this one, so fine. And, well, MLI layers will be nice. We'll eventually have that cryogenic engine, so... Okay, MLI layers. And that actually uses up most of what we've got, so... That's okay. I'll move up the MLI layers. Okay, I better be careful, otherwise we'll miss this alarm because Kerbal Alarm Clock doesn't stop me in time. I think there's probably a setting that I need to change for that. But, yeah. Before the Looney 2 is done, we need to do the mid-course adjustment for the EVE 1. Okay, here it is. Let's uh, activate avionics and get to point at the node. Here we go. Okay, just about right. Let's see what it did. Okay. So we have to turn back towards the sun. Well, good enough for me. We'll roll. 
that seems fine. Okay, well, this is continuing on its way. I don't think I need to shut off the avionics. Uh, power should be fine. Degradation, by the way, 21%. So, seems okay. And then we'll add the SOI change alarm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are launching to the moon with intent to land with the Looney 2. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Hold those fairings for a little bit there. We're past the speed of sound. Okay, and separation, separation, and fairings. Okay, final stage here, or at least final stage to orbit. Plenty of Delta V here. Well, we would be boosting up in generally the right direction if we keep learning. So I'll give it a little bit of extra since we have some Delta V. I don't think we need it though. The next stage we'll be able to do everything. I'll cut it there. That's enough. Okay. Separation. Okay, that's fine. Let's do this. And... Go. We have telemetry, pressure, and temperature only. But we are trying to land, so... And... Okay, a little bit too much there. Uh, I'd rather have it on the opposite side. I mean, I guess a crash course would be good. After all, we did get some practice with those impactors, right? Oh no, these are sort of pointing at the sun now. Let's see. 0% wear. Okay. In fact, we're recharging right now, even though the main panels are not in optimal position. Lots of extra solar. I apparently skimped on the comms, though. I think with the Commutatron 16 we can do better than this, but anyway. So, we need like 7 and a half minutes and then 2 and a half minutes, call it all together 10 minutes. Separation. Okay, we'll do what we can here. Okay, I think we can wait a bit. The suicide burn countdown isn't thinking about our next stage, it's thinking about this one, so we have to give a little bit of leeway. Okay, last burn with this one. Okay, staging. Okay, well we have too much burn time there, uh, suicide burn countdown time. Well, I made it a pancake for a reason. I didn't want it to tip over. <laughs> I have a morbid fear of tipping over, you know. Well, we got the temperature scan for moon space low around here. I hadn't gotten that before, apparently. Okay, well, I'll give myself some time. Uh, might have uh, been a little bit too early on everything. Ah, uh, nuts. We're going to be hitting hard. I had enough Delta V, I was just messed up. Uh, oh. Well, we'll need another one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, my approach was just... I'm not used to coming straight down, I guess. Our Dionysuses are taking quite a bit of time, so we're going to hire more engineers. I think we have the budget now. Um, yeah, let's say a hundred. Efficiency is still a bit low around here. Of course, our other engineers are still at ELA-4. This has a max of 1,490, though, so... Got a lot of room. I'll get... Well, how are we doing? Alright, I'll get another 100. 
All right. Well, that speeds things up a little bit. I thought that we had started up uh, Dionysus, and we also had the one that we already had the pod for. Maybe the first one is the one that we already flew the pod for, but I thought that was the second one. So, a bit confused here. So, uh, hope everything was all right. But anyway, we will proceed with that next, I believe. Or we might be arriving at Venus with the EVE 1 probe. We've got early Hydrolox engines. Okay, yeah, we're gonna focus on our Venus mission arriving. Okay, this uh, EVE 1 probe is now in the SOI of Venus, and the periapsis looks fine to me. It doesn't particularly matter whether we're in communication with it at periapsis because there's no way it's going to be capturing into orbit and it's not exactly going to be in communication when we get there uh, but that's fine we are just going to make sure it gets sunlight right now it's not so change that relevant instruments are running but our hope that we could get it into orbit and do these long term and finish them off will not happen. But yeah, Venus flyby. We have to transmit something. Um, I think the infrared radiometer will transmit. That's just 22 hours. That's about the time till periapsis. Oh, I guess the infrared radiometry took extra time. We'll have to force do one of these things. I'll do that on the way out if necessary. Well, the problem is, well, the vis um, no, that was the visible visible imaging. We should just do the telemetry. The visible imaging will be on various different biomes, so that's complicated. Let's not force run that. Okay, well, there's the sun on the horizon of Venus. Okay, so we transmitted the science and that worked. Okay, so let's just stop the forced run. That was the telemetry analysis. We're, we've been sending back plenty of science. It's just, it just doesn't count because it's not complete. So, but we've fulfilled the contract and hopefully we'll get the radiometer actually done from Venus high. Seems to be wobbling between two different biomes. Okay, we did manage to transmit one from the Midlands. Okay, well, this is all done. Let's go back to Space Center. Probe reaches Venus. Well, actually, probes had reached Venus already, but that's all right. Mars flyby. Obviously, we're building those already, so let's pick that up. Venus orbit. Well, we'll eventually do it. We'll pick that up too. Prestige Trivial. That's sad. <laughs> That's sad. Prestige Trivial. Oh well. Alright, more staff. Okay, we got two more bundles of engineers for ELA-5. We've got a thousand there now. Okay, so I have a problem. Uh, we know that we trained one of our Kerbonauts, Viola, Viola Zabo, for Mercury, but it says no train crew found for this cockpit or capsule for the Mark 1 pod. So we'll keep that in mind, but this is still an uncrewed test, so let's launch. Uh, ignition. Um, we have loss of one engine. Uh, well... Technically, I think we could probably actually launch on that. We have too much extra Delta V anyway, but we'll do the right thing and roll back and fix it. Okay, let's try this again. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. <laughs> it's a core engine this time. You know, let's quit. Well, the core is definitely going to outlast the boosters this time. 
assuming that engines can run for that long. Okay, we are through the clouds. And past the speed of sound. Well, I guess it's good to test one engine out launch capability. Booster set. Oh! Those Separatrons there fired. I did not expect that. I guess I accidentally placed them there. So many little Separatron packs. Got the wrong ones there. Uh, three engines burn for the remainder of the time. Separation and ignition. No apparent problems. Now, <laughs> we didn't have to turn off the boosters as planned. We didn't hit that kind of thrust weight ratio. We peaked out at four. Here, we want to shut off the main engine here and ignite the Gamma 2s. Okay, igniting and shut down. Peak was 5.9. Ouch. I should have shut it down earlier. Lots of extra fuel though. I think I misjudged this. Oops. I thought there was extra fuel, but there isn't. UH-25 and MTO. Yeah, we'll have to fix the balance on this whole thing. Right side, it will deorbit. Or, well, we'll cut it right shy of orbit there. Okay, separation. And we'll wait till lap elapses to complete orbit. Okay, ignition. I'm got arm to shoot right now. Okay, that's a nice one and a half hour orbit. We are waiting to complete the orbit. We'll uh, wait around a little bit longer so our entire descent is in daylight. Well, this here looks fine. Um, like again. The ignition. Okay, that's getting a bit tenuous. Normal. Separation. And... We just needed to keep this orientation. And all will be well. Well, we might end up in the Amazon. We'll see. Well, we're passing the Amazon. You can barely tell that that's ground, though. But you can see us here. There's the mouth of the Amazon. We'll be in the Atlantic. Okay, the interesting part. Or maybe there's just enough land here sticking out to... Uh, I don't know, I think we'll pass over it, but it's going to be close. Nope, oh, nope, we are going to be on land. We've got one of those intermittent satellite connections, Deneb G again. Okay, initial parachute deployment. Okay, the contract is happy. We have fulfilled that contract and let's recover it. All right, so with that being done, we can pick up the actual first orbital flight crewed contract, but we do need a Kerbal who is properly trained for the Mark 1 pod. I'll look into that and hopefully we'll have that resolved for the next episode. But with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.